I don't exactly know who it was that said life is stranger than fiction, or was it truth is stranger than... Yeah, whatever. The events I'm about to recall were so strange in the field of coincidence that if I had been told them rather than experienced them, I would have said hogwash. It all started in that day when I'd received two inquiries for my services from two completely different clients. Needless to say, most welcome calls after three weeks of sheer nothingness. Did you ever hear of the Harrington kidnapping case? Are you that same Harrington? I didn't know that. It was about 10 years ago. 12 years ago, last January. Do you recall any of the details? Mm, some. There's a little girl, three or four. Three. Only child. Uh, he paid a ransom. Very large ransom, as I recall. Quarter of a million dollars. And the child was never returned. The police never found any trace of Ellen or her kidnappers. Mr. Ross. That first year, four people came up with claims as to Alan's whereabouts. Second year, there were three. Each year, somebody has come up to say that they know where our daughter is. All the claims false, of course. And now another one has come up, huh? A woman this time. She claims Alan is alive. I want you to meet her. All the details are here. Follow her instructions, get her story. Maybe yeah, it'll probably be like all the others, but see what she has to say. Mr. Harrington, why don't you go to the police? No. Police would mean publicity, photographs, Sunday supplements rehashing the whole story. My wife couldn't take that again. I don't think I could. She's had two nervous breakdowns already. Another disappointment might kill her. Margaret, it... Mr. Ross, the only thing that keeps my wife going is a psychic quack. He calls himself Thaddeus. Thaddeus? Yes. He helps her, so I put up with him. He's trying to make her accept Ellen's death, which is more than a psychiatrist, and I've tried three, has been able to do. Doctors are handicapped. They can't promise the living to contact the spirits of the dead. This is my home phone number. We're surveying a new oil field, so if you call me, say you're a geologist. Geologist. Well, I can pass for a lot of things. I should be able to pass for a geologist. <laughs> You're at the right alley at the right time. Just following the instructions in your letter. All of them? All of them. You said no cops or no cops. My name is David Ross. What do I call you? Curious. I'm a private investigator. And I'm a Sadie Birch. Come on. Why did Mr. Harrington come with you? Well, he thought that we might uh, understand each other better. Sure. You look like more my type. Yeah. You got a story to tell? Yeah, one your client will be very glad to hear. You want some coffee? That's all they serve here. Coffee, tea, milk. I sound like an airline hostess, don't I? Sort of. What's your story? My husband died two weeks ago. I'm sorry to hear about your loss. Oh, it was a terrible loss. Harry left me with no dough and a 15-year-old kid to support. His kid? She came with the marriage. You have a sympathetic nature. Yeah, I'm known for that. Oh, I loved Marcy. I raised her since she was three, treated her just like my own kid. And then I found out that she ain't even Harry's kid. How did you find that out? Well, I was going through Harry's things, and I come across an old shoe box, and it had those clippings in it, you know, from the Harrington kidnapping? Yeah, well, people collect all kinds of things. Yeah, but Harry collected something special, a baby shoe, the same size and the same color that the Harrington kid wore during the snatch. Even to the built-up special inner soul that the newspapers made such a big play about. Really? 
Yeah, that grabs you, doesn't it? Where is this shoe? I didn't bring it with me, but you'll see it. Like I said, I love Marcy. I really do, and... Well, I'm just willing to just sacrifice my feelings for her sake and, and let her go back to her own parents. Yeah, sure, sure you will. And the sacrifice is all for love, hmm? You both? No, not during business hours. How about the sacrifice? Now, you expect nothing in return, of course, except uh, possibly a small gift from the Harringtons, because they've got so much and you have so little, right? You understand a mother's heart. <laughs> Much, but it's it's our little nest. Marcy's gonna miss her home. And me. Yeah, well, she can dry her tears on all that Harrington money. Money's a good bandage for a broken heart. Yeah, I bleed for you. Where's the girl? I got a head. I think with it. Harrington might have had the cops tail you and grab the kid. Relax, will you? Relax. Harrington is following your instructions. The cops aren't in on this. Good. Yeah, but you got to produce the girl before I make a report to Harrington. I'm the manager, handsome. I call the plays. All right, beautiful. Now then... These are all the clippings that were in the L.A. newspaper. Must come quite a shock to you, huh, that your husband had been mixed up in a kidnapping? No, it wasn't. If you knew Harry, you'd know he's the only guy in the world that could go in for a kidnapping and wind up with no dough and a kid to support. 250 grand paid, and Harry never got a cent of it. How do you know that? He was living in a dump crummier than this when we got married. And that was less than a year after the kidnapping. No, Harry didn't get any of that loot. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe he wasn't the only one in on the heist, huh? Maybe Harry spent all the loot before you met him. Well, there'd be some signs of it. He didn't even have a new suit when we got married. This'll grab Harrington. And grab you the brass ring, huh? And it's better than the dirty end of the stick. You know, I don't want to be greedy, but I was thinking about uh, 50000 to begin with. Yeah, yeah, well, let's check the merchandise and make sure of that before we talk price, huh? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly as they had it in the newspapers. Hello? No, Mrs. Zabrowski, she ain't here. She's on her way. So she missed the bus. Yes, yeah, she knows. Hermosa Beach Bus. Don't worry, she'll be there. Yeah. Well, so get somebody else. That's the way it is. Marcy ain't the only babysitter in the world. Goodbye. You make a deal with Harrington. And I'll make a date for him to see Marcy. Tell me. Does Marcy know anything about this? Why make a big thing with a kid till it's settled? However, she will cooperate, eh? She'll cooperate. I... Yeah, I know, I know. You're the manager. Yeah, yeah. I expect to hear from you. Oh, you will. One question. You were married to Harry all those years. 
How come you never came across his junk before? A wife doesn't snoop around in her husband's private affairs. It ain't good taste. What was his first wife's name? He never used it. Should I tell you what he called her instead? No, thanks. Where were they married? How should I know? I never ask a guy what he did or where he did it before he came into my life. You're very genteel. Zabronsky. Huh? One, two, nine, one, twenty-nine South Brill Street. Oh, Marcy! I uh, rang the doorbell out front, but uh, nobody answered, so I came around back. Mrs. Zabronsky isn't home. No, no. No, my name's David Ross. I'm a, an old friend of your father's. Oh, you knew Daddy? Yep, yep. Well, I just got back into town. I got back into L.A. again, and, uh, well, I heard about Harry, about your dad, and I, uh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So I heard you were out here in Hermosa Beach. I thought I'd drive out here and see how things were with you. It was nice of you. I guess you liked my father a lot. He, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, well, I, uh, I roam around a lot, and I haven't seen him much lately, but he was quite a guy, quite a guy. He was nice. Wasn't home much, but when he was, we used to talk a lot. Yeah, about your problems like old buddies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wanted me to learn to be practical, because that's the way the world is, he said. Yeah, that's, that's true. Well, did you learn? I'm not sure. My daddy said ever since I was little, I had a wild imagination. He said it wasn't healthy. He said I always remembered things all wrong, or things that never happened at all. Uh-huh. Like what? It's funny. Ever since I can remember, there, there was this lady's face. I was sure it was my mother, my real mother, not Sadie. I used to tell my father about her, how real she was in my memory. But he said that wasn't the way my mother looked at all. But no matter how many times he told me I was wrong, I still remembered the lady's face. I still thought she was my mother. What do you think now? I mean, now, now that you're all grown up. <laughs> I guess it's the way my father always said. It's just a picture I was remembering from someplace. Well, Harry always was uh, practical, you know? I guess he just didn't understand a dreamy kid. So many things I thought were real, Daddy called dreams. No, it's hard to tell even now what I dreamed and what I remembered. There was one thing Daddy could never explain. Not really. What was that? How could I have the same dream over and over again? Always the same big house with the garden and the fountain with the little boy and the dolphin. That's a big fish. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why did I dream about the dolphin so often? Did I see it once? Was it just like Daddy said? My imagination. Geologist with a headache. Come in, Mr. Ross. Mr. Harrington is expecting you. Would you wait right here, please, sir? Without the basis of being, he's like a ship without a rudder. Mystic flame, passivity, psychic transformation. We can talk in there. A meeting of the Society of the Luminous Path. Oh, yeah. Who, who's that? That is. Oh, that's that is. He holds the sessions here for the convenience of my wife. Remembering the 
Let me see it, please. Hmm. That's right, it's just the clippings. The shoe got away from me. How could the shoe get away? I was cold caught in your driveway. By whom? I didn't see. Who else knew I was bringing the shoe here, Mr. Harrington? I didn't tell anyone. Well, somebody could have listened in when I called you an hour ago. No, that was on my private line. There's no extension. But the child. Tell me about the child. Well, I liked her. She didn't impress me as a conniving type. She was awfully quick to bring up a child, though, and talk about it. I didn't have to ask her. She could be in it up to her sweet little chin. You said you had a picture of her. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. She's lovely. Yeah, well, so are 10,000 other girls in L.A. But the dolphin, when you phoned, you seemed to think that was important. Yeah, yeah, but again, I'm not certain. Sadie Birch could have beefed her about your house, the dolphin, and everything the girl seems to recall. Who do you hired me, Mr. Harrington? Just my lawyers. Maybe Sadie Birch said something. No, 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 that doesn't make sense. No. No, somebody doesn't want this case reopened. Could be the kidnappers. Or oh, it could be your present heirs. Oh, that's ridiculous. No, 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 no. Who are your present heirs? Oh, my wife. And? And Brad Elston, he's my cousin. And he's also my best friend. Yeah. Yeah, but you've got a great deal of money, Mr. Harrington. Oh, Brad doesn't need my money. He's very well off in his own right. Besides, he was in there with me when you were attacked. Oh, he was, huh? I talked to him? Well, yes. Listen, I, uh, I just skimmed through these clippings, but Elston, wasn't he the man who delivered the ransom money? Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. Well, good, then he may be able to help us. How? Well, if I can connect Harry Birch and Sadie to the kidnapping, then there's a good chance that Marcy really is your daughter. You see, I've got to have someone to corroborate Sadie's story. Oh, Andrews, would you please ask Mr. Elston to join me in the library? Uh, what about the service? Oh, beyond reproach, absolutely. How long have you had him? Fifteen years more? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did the baby have a nurse? Yes. Inga. Yeah, what about her? She went back home to Sweden. When? Well, a few months after the kidnapping. Like the rest of us, she refused to give up hope. That's too much. Right, this is Mr. Ross. Mr. Mr. Elson. Mr. Ross is a private investigator. Oh, now, George, not another claim. Yes, but this one has merit. Mr. Ross was given a baby's shoe. It fits the description. Oh, fine, fine. We'll have the pediatrician check it out. Unfortunately, he was attacked. The shoe was stolen. The shoe was stolen? Yeah. Yeah, you know, m maybe in a way, whoever took the shoe did us a favor. Well, I mean, if it wasn't the real shoe, why would they steal it? Uh, excuse us. What is it? George, may I be very frank? Why, of course. I was just thinking, suppose a clever private investigator suddenly realized that the shoe would not stand up under expert examination. Now, wouldn't he just get rid of it? Simply go on with a very lucrative case? Yeah, that's, that's frank. That's pretty frank, Mr. Elston. Let's just say I'm not that clever, huh? I got a knob in the back of my head to prove it. Mr. Ross, uh, what do you suggest? Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? I'd uh, like you to continue on the case. You would? All right, I will. I'll do what any clever private investigator might do. Why all the interest in a dead guy? Well, maybe uh, the dead guy's got some live friends from 12 years ago. Well, come on, come on, come on, shoot, will you? Don't take all day. Hey, cool it up, huh? 20 bucks a game, I'll take all day and all night. Yeah. All right, all right. So there's Mike Donovan and uh, Joey Diamond. Now, who else? 
Harry used to hang around a lot with uh, one guy, Larry Rogers. It was him, Harry Birch, and Sadie. Yeah. And Larry's girl, a Svensk. <laughs> Man. Was oh, she a dish? A Svensk, you mean Swedish? Yeah, yeah. Swedish. What, uh, what, what, uh, what was the name, you remember? Adam. Try Inga. Yeah, yeah, that's it, Inga. Is she and Larry still going together? Uh, it broke up a long time ago when Larry went to Q. Hey, Ross, why don't you lay off of me? Did his ten? I don't want to get in any trouble. I just want information. I'm so buying. Now, where would I find Larry today? Yeah. He's living in a rooming house on uh, Alvarado near Ninth. It's called Mary Potter's. Mary Potter's? Hmm? Now, I have one more question. Where, uh, where was Harry Birch married the first time? Greedy, aren't you? Back in his hometown in Idaho. Small burg called LeClaire. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lucky. We'll get you next time. Any time. Any time, Pigeon. Excuse me, darling. Oh, and uh, don't forget the man on your way out. Call it instinct, call it blue sky. Something inside me kept saying there was some connection between the Winnie Blake book and the Harrington kidnapping. Twelve years ago, Winnie had to be the consort of every top mobster along the stem. Could be she was going to reveal something in those true confessions of hers that would shed some light on the inside of that Harrington snatch. No proof. No proof at all. Just that same old melody that played over and over again in my mind. very much about music. I am just an amateur. What do you want? Information. Where is Larry Rogers? Who is Larry Rogers? Larry Rogers is the man who called you today. And yeah, you got trouble, Selston. You know, my, uh... My cousin thinks you are a very smart detective. But I don't. But I think you're like me. You're nothing but an amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whatever we are, Larry Rogers is a professional. I told you I don't know any Larry Rogers. Oh, come on, come on. Will you cut it? Will you just cut it out? Larry Rogers is the bag man that you delivered the money to. And yet, less than one week later, he knocked off a hawk shop for exactly $187.68, plus a 10-year stretch of queue. Now, why would a man do that who had just been handed a quarter of a million bucks? Kind of hard to figure out, isn't it? Huh? Unless, of course, you never delivered the money to him in the first place. <laughs> that is absurd. If the, um, the kidnappers didn't get the money like you said, how come they didn't contact my cousin again? They were scared. They were afraid it was a trap. Now, you listen to me. I dropped that money at the appointed place. I don't know any more than that. Well, I do. When all the action started, Rogers knew that an investigation would point to him, so he didn't have time to wait. He started moving on you today. You start your move right now. Oh, come on. Don't be stupid. Tell me where Larry is. Are you going to get yourself killed? 
Or maybe you've got a quarter of a million bucks you can hand over to him. But he also might demand ten years' interest. The front door is right through there. So he's... Marcy with you? Yeah. Now you get out here. It's the Stay a While Motel, number four, Ventura off Laurel. Which is a pretty good place to hide from Larry Rogers, right? So Sadie, I know it's Larry. Where is he? Sadie, don't be stupid. Come on, where is he? Caldwell Hotel. It's on Adams. All right, you keep the door locked. Stay there. I'll be there as soon as I've seen Larry. <laughs> I told you before, he's a small-time crook with a record. You didn't go down to that flea bag to see him? No. Who did you go down to see? I went down to see Brad Elston. Larry Rogers, being there was just a surprise to you. No. No? No, I had a hunch that uh, Brad Elston went there to meet him. Now, you would admit that it was a little unusual for a man like Elston to be connected with someone like Larry Rogers? Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Lieutenant. It's very unusual. Well, the more agreeable you get, the more positive I am that you've got something to hide. That's your hang-up. All right. Let's try it another way. How did you know that Elston was on his way down to see Rogers? I had a hunch. Did you know Elston had a gun? No. But I had a hunch. Were you working for Elston? Nope. Who are you working for, Ross? Oh, come on, Lieutenant. That's privileged information. You ought to know that. Ross, I've got a double homicide to solve. Double? That's right. You mean Elston and Larry didn't kill each other? You didn't know. Well, you didn't give me a chance to ask. They both had guns. Neither was fired. You got any ideas? I don't know. I thought I was sure they killed each other. I, uh... Wow, this is like a blank wall. There is one wild idea, though. Let's hear it. Well, uh, Larry had a, had a girlfriend a long time ago, a Swedish chick named uh, Inga. Yeah, well, this girl went back to Sweden. She came back after a year. And we watched her for about five years after the Harrington kidnapping. And she died. How? A natural death. Yeah, well, I'm fresh out of ideas, Lieutenant. And I'm beginning to get a lot of new ones. Thanks for mentioning Inga. Opens up a whole new train of thought. Yeah, well, so long, Lieutenant. It's been good. Sit down, Ross. All right, look, I've got some I said sit down. All right. Of 
Quite a coincidence. Inga was the uh, Harrington's nursemaid. Harrington's cousin, Elston, delivered the ransom. Larry Rogers was Inga's sweetheart. Yeah, well, if you're interested in those kind of things, I guess it's kind of interesting. Ross, you working for Harrington? Okay, get out. Who is it? Ross. Did you find Larry? Marcy, honey, listen to me. I lied to you. I'm a private investigator. I know. Sadie told me. Yeah, but you were right about the dolphin. You didn't dream it. It's real. What about Larry? Shut up! Did Sadie leave this room at all tonight? No, we've both been here since noon. Hey, what is this? When Larry phoned you today, did he try to scare you off? He threatened me. Listen, I gotta blow town. You tell Harrington he owes me money for getting his kid back. It's payoff time. Marcy, honey, that's the way it is. Mr. Ross, please. I'm so frightened. I... I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't even know who I am. I believe you're Ellen Harrington. But if my father, I mean Harry Birch, if he took me away from my real parents. Why? He was nice to me. I thought he loved me. Don't try to understand it all at once, all right? Come on. Look, what about me? I want to talk about Larry. He was Harry's partner in the kidnapping, wasn't he? Sure, sure he was. He had to be. Otherwise, why would he care about you contacting Harrington? Yeah, I guess so. Harry would have never pulled it alone. It's all guesswork with you, isn't it? Because you weren't in on it in the first place. Did Larry say so? Larry didn't say anything. By the time I got to the hotel, he was dead. You can relax now, Sadie. Larry's dead. Harry's dead. Inga's dead. There's nobody left to tie you into it. Come on, Morris. I'm going to take you home to the Harringtons. Hey, what about me? You? Oh, you'll get yours, Zadie. My own cousin. I can't believe it. Did he help them plan the kidnapping? No, I don't think he had anything to do with that. I think he just stole the ransom money. He could have taken her life. Yeah. But they didn't... Well, you've got your daughter back now, I, I think. I can't give you 100% guarantee, however. Uh, Harry Birch came from Idaho, a small town called Eau Claire. I had a man out there check it out. Uh, there is a record of a marriage and the subsequent death of the woman. But no record of a child from that marriage? No. If there had been a child? Well, then there would be serious doubt. But as it is. When Andrews let you in today, she seemed like such a frightened little thing. Well, she's had her whole life turned upside down today, Mr. Harrington. I can hardly blame her for that. What about your wife? You do have a sense of humor. Oh, you must be Mr. Ross. Thank you for bringing Ellen back to us. Uh, Mrs. Harrington. Did, uh... Did you tell anyone else that I was in the case? No, no. Thaddeus, the... the psychic? Yes. Thaddeus? He has two assistants, his temple disciples. Uh, Mrs. Harrington... <clears throat> uh, do you, uh, assist Thaddeus with any, uh, financial support? Yes, I've given him a great deal of money. And promised him more in your will as your heir? Yes. Yeah. I've got to get the phone. Well, there's one right here. Uh, no, no, I'd rather use one in my office, if you don't mind. Uh, would you see me out? Yes. Oh, excuse me. I'm glad you're back together again. I'll see you again soon, Marcy. Uh, uh, Alan. Bye, Mr. Ross. Bye. You think that is, did it? Well, who else? Wouldn't uh, Ellen have been the logical target? Of course, but they couldn't find her. They followed me to Elston's house, and then they followed Elston down to Larry's hotel. They killed Larry, 
because he was the only one who could back up Sadie's story. What about Brad? Yeah, what about Brad? Was he always wealthy? Well, yes, he had a little setback in the stock market a little while ago. Uh, don't tell me about 13 years ago. Yes, but it was just a small difficulty. It happens to all of us. A small difficulty that was uh, fixed by stealing a quarter of a million dollars. My wife mustn't know about Brad. She doesn't even know he's dead yet, but she'll have to know eventually. Right now, her only interest is Ellen. Tell me, how do you feel about the kid? My wife believes we found our daughter again. I'm willing to believe it, too. Okay. I don't know how to thank you. Well... Shall I pay you now? No, no, no. Tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Harris. Good night. Tomorrow. Well, that about ties it up, then. Once you poison Blue, pick up Sadie. If you can't make the kidnapping stick, you've always got her in attempted extortion. Yeah. No. no, 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 Lieutenant, no. Come on, I'll fill in the blank space before you tomorrow. I'm pushed. Good night. Checked further, no reliable records, but possible Alice and Harry Birch did have a child. Saving my life. Dirty Dancing's Jennifer Grey gets involved in some dirty business in the legal world next this afternoon. A colleague's murder leaves no shortage of suspects, and her efforts to nail the killer leave her wondering just who she can trust. A case for murder follows shortly on five.